I just read my 50th book. These are only the ones that I read in January. I don't know. I guess like, I'm gonna go through them all. Oh. <laughs> this is so precarious. Oh my God. Okay, let's, let's get into it. I have my reading journal. I just read my 50th book of the year. It is May 14th. So I think I'm doing well, especially considering I set my reading goal in January for 25 books. And then in January, I read 17 books. I upped my reading goal to 75 books now. I have been enjoying book content. And then I even, I just finished editing a vlog the other day of like book content. So I was like, I'm just gonna keep making it because I like watching it. So like you should make the stuff that you enjoy watching, right? And then that's when you like feel passion in it or whatever. It felt like a big milestone, you know, 50 books, that's a big deal, especially in five months, not even. Especially like I've kind of been in a reading slump. So the fact that I just passed 50 books in a reading slump feels really big, especially as someone who hasn't read traditional books in a long time. But I guess, you know, we start with January and then we'll update our little book pile. I wanna say like all the books that I've read, but I'm only gonna go into like my five star reads of the year. So starting with January, I read A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mass. This one I feel like is a, is a booktube staple. I feel like there's not a lot to say about it. Looking back on it, I do really enjoy this book. This was the first book that I read of the year. I read it in like two sittings while I was like camping on the beach. So it was like a good book for those vibes, kind of, you know? Especially like someone getting back into fantasy books. Like it's just a very easy first fantasy book read. I did rate it five stars. Of course, A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Mass also rated this five stars. Looking back on it, I don't, know if I would rate it five stars again. Like if I did a reread of it, I would probably rate it only four stars. This one, spoilers for everything I'm talking about, obviously, all of the books that I talk about, there's gonna be spoilers. This one, it falls into that thing where none of the main characters die, or if they do die, they don't stay dead. So it's like, you're reading this and they're literally in a war and it's this supposed to be this like big bad guy who's been a problem for like 500 years now, but no one dies except for their dad who, you only meet in the first book and you're like, oh, he's not that great of a guy. And then he just like disappears and he comes back with all these ships and you're like, okay, cool. Like he was off like gathering stuff for us, but why do I care? You know, it's just one of those things where you know that everyone's gonna make it out safe because it's a YA. So you don't really care if anyone dies, especially because after the first book they set they set that standard. Next, we have Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters. This one, I only rated three stars. I just can't get into Percy Jackson. A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Mass, also three stars. Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. Controversial, three stars. This book was just okay. Okay, here we go. Powerless by Lauren Roberts, five stars. This was also the first book of the year that I annotated and I did it in my own little annotation way, but it's like fully highlighted and tabbed. This is five stars for me. I think this one is five stars because I used it as a break while I was listening to the Assassin's Blade on audiobook and trying to get through Assassin's Blade because I started Assassin's Blade before I started Throne of Glass. But then I was like, I don't care about the character. So I don't think I should be reading the novellas first. So I was going to read Throne of Glass, try to get into it and then do Assassin's Blade or like do them simultaneously kind of, which I ended up doing. I think I finished Assassin's Blade after Air of Fire, but I was like halfway through it when I was like reading Air of Fire. But this was like the kind of perfect little break in between like Throne of Glass and between novellas of the Assassin's Blade. I love this book because I always described it as the show psych meets the Hunger Games. <laughs> and also just so much banter and you care about the couple and they never kiss. Like, it's so good. I would highly recommend this to anyone, especially if you're a big fan of like YA fantasy, as well as like, if you're a good fan of books that are, that are about like deadly trials, like the Hunger Games and stuff. Also weird fun fact about my copy is it came with two dust jackets. I don't know why. So if, if anyone ever loses their dust jacket, I got you. Next, this one's gonna be a long haul, so get ready. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This was another five-star read for me. This book has become my Roman Empire. 
I think about this book all the time. I have already read it twice this year. You'll see it again later as a reread because I'm counting my rereads as reads towards my 50 books read this year because I read them again. Fourth Wing, I love Fourth Wing. I am a big Game of Thrones girly, especially the Targaryens. So I just love pretty much any source of media that has dragons in it. So this one was a big win for me. I love like the twists in it. <laughs> like there's big twists at the end. I love it all around. Just like, I will never stop recommending this book. I already have three copies of Fourth Wing alone. It's soon to be four, more than likely, because I'm on the hunt for a first edition with the Sprayed Edges. But I love this book so much. Of course, you know, we're going right into Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros after this. I actually only rated this one four stars. I know a lot of other people did not like this one as much as they liked the first one. After I finished Iron Flame, I have two books that I listened to on Audible because they were free. And I was commuting during this time, so I was listening to a lot of audiobooks. The first one is Hooked by Emily McIntyre. I rated three stars. And then Wretched by Emily McIntyre, which I rated two stars. After those, I have Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Mass. I rated this four stars. I actually almost DNF'd this book like four times, so I'm surprised it got four stars. After that, I read Air of Fire by Sarah J Mass. Just continuing on. This one was a big five stars for me. This book was like kind of my everything, not gonna lie. Like I love a training arc. You can't tell me this book isn't just chef's kiss. Okay, we have another, this was when I got, I, yeah, this is probably around when I got Kindle Unlimited because they were doing like a thing that was like, get two months for free if you sign up now for Kindle Unlimited. And I was like, sweet, I have a Kindle app. I don't have a Kindle, but I have the Kindle app. Why? What else could I possibly want? So I read Dark Deception by Sarah Piper, which was three stars. Next, I read Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas. Surprisingly to me, I rated this four stars. Looking back, I thought that the, this one is my favorite of the series. So that's kind of crazy to me that I rated this four stars. Next, I read A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. This is another one that I listened to for free on Audible. I actually really, really liked this one. So I have the rest of the series on my TBR. Last year for January, I read King of Greed by Anna Huang. Read this four stars. This is my favorite book of hers that I've read. And I've only read half of the Twisted series, but this is my favorite one so far. And then finally, my final five star book of this month as well. We have Butcher and Blackboard by Bryn Weaver. I love this book so much. Obviously, look at the trigger warnings. This is also my first ever Book of the Month book, so that's fun. Look at the trigger warnings because it, they are very specific. I would recommend listening to the audiobook of this one. This is the first audiobook that I'd ever heard that was, I think it's duet read, where there's dual read, where you have two people or more reading each of their like respective chapters. So because it's like dual point of view, you have like her reading her chapters and him reading his chapters. But in this, they're both talking during each of the chapters. So it's like if it was Sloane's chapter, it would be read by her, but then all of his lines, he would speak. And they like are talking over each other. And it was just an absolutely brilliant audiobook. I loved this all around. Like their banter was so cute. The idea of it, so cute. I'm so excited for the sequel. Like. You will not catch me slacking when this sequel comes out of this. Um, that's Jen. It's ah! fine. Okay, that is all the books that I read in January. Like I said, it was 17 books. Um, I have all of my little, my little stats here. So 17 books. Uh, I read 10 fantasy books, three romance, three dark romance, and one uh, children's fantasy is how I put it. So let me pull all of my February reads. Let's see, I read 14 books in February. This pile looks small, but I was really enjoying my Kindle Unlimited subscription during this month. So I started out the month by reading Rouge by Greer Rivers. I read it three stars. And then I read Between Love and Loathing by Shane Rose, also three stars. I'm pretty sure this is where The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Mass falls on this list. I rated this four stars. I was devastated after finishing this. Next, I finished, I guess you could say I finished the tandem read. I finished Empire of Storms by Sarah J Mass, as well as Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Mass. I think I actually abandoned the tandem read. I have each of it marked about here. So it's probably like about there. But Empire of Storms, I rated five stars. This one was just devastating, honestly. So good. I 
I'm glad I did the tandem raid, but I also want to go back and read them separately. I just know I would not have finished Tower of Dawn if I didn't do the tandem raid, and then I never would have gotten to experience Kingdom of Ash, which would have been even more devastating. Tower of Dawn, not my favorite. I'm just not a Kale girly. I fucking hate Kale, so. His book was super mediocre for me. Next up, Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass. Five stars, obviously. This book is 900 and, it's like 998 pages long. Nin 980 pages long. I read this book in approximately 12 hours. Like I started it as soon as I finished Tower of Dawn, I went right into this and I read approximately 400 pages right after finishing uh, Tower of Dawn. It was kind of an insane couple of days that I literally finished this the next day. So I started it at probably like 10 p.m. and I finished it by like 10 p.m. the next day. Like I read this book in 24 hours. <laughs> it was so good. After Kingdom of Ash, I read The Fake Out by Stephanie Archer. I rated that four stars. That was my first hockey romance. After that, I read House of Earth and Blood, Christmas City One. Controversial, I loved this book. I rated it four stars. I know a lot of people struggled with this one and I don't know if it's because it was an urban fantasy or what. Everyone always says that there's like a huge info dump at the beginning of this book, but I didn't feel like that. And I don't know if it's because I come from reading more like science fiction than I do like traditional fantasy. Like growing up, I was always reading science fiction. I read the first Dune book at like 12. So I don't, I don't know if it's because I come from that side of fantasy where the urban fantasy was a big draw for me. I love it. I, can't, I cannot wait to finish these books, but I just have to be in like a place where I can sit down for hours and just like read big chunks of it because they're so big. I'm also really glad that I tabbed this book as I was reading it because there were so many times where I would tab something because I thought it was important and I'd be I'd, literally it was like this first tab here that's 50 pages in and I'd be all the way over here at like 700 pages and I'd be like wait didn't they say that? I tabbed that. It was like this one over here and it was like literally in the first 50 pages. So I enjoyed it because I kind of thought ahead and I was like this is gonna be important later. Yeah. I recommend this one though. I liked this one. Oh, here we go, here we go. Next up, very excited about this one. We have Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This book was five stars for me. I love this book so much. This this book and this series is everything to me. This series and Fourth Wing are probably gonna be like my top series of the year. I already know it. Something about this story and the characters in it and like the way that it's told, it just like wrenches out my heart but in like the sweetest way. I don't, I didn't cry in this one. I definitely, I bawled my eyes out during the second one, but it's like, it's so precious and like their banter and the relationship and just like her outlook on everything is just so sweet. And she's like the cutest character, but she's not like, she's naive, but she's almost not. You know, like, I just, I love it so much. Once Upon a Broken Heart will always have a special place in my heart. And I am going to read this so many times. So of course, after that, I read The Ballad of Never After, which is the sequel in the trilogy by Stephanie Garber. I also rated this one five stars. I'm currently in the middle of rereading it. So that's why there's a bookmark in it. You know, when you read, when you read a fantastic book and you're like, oh no, this is a trilogy. So usually the first one is really good. And then the second one is like, mm, sure. Like we're just like, we're getting plot points, whatever. And then the third one is just like, oh, this book, to be fair, to be fair. I haven't read the third one yet because this book was so devastating to me that I, got maybe I think like 50 pages into the third book and I was like I have to put this down or I am going to sit here and cry for days and days and I'm not going to do anything else but sit here and cry about these books like there's so much about this story and the way that it's told and like the fairy tale aspects of it where there's so many different fairy tales but you don't you don't know how they end because there's the story curse and so it's just like there's so many different things that it should make the the main character Evangeline, it sh like she should not have the happy outlook that she has on life, but she's just so like happy and she just wants love. And I, fi I finished this book and I think in my review, I wrote this book is heartbreak incarnate. 
and it's so true and like this book gave me like filled me with so much love but also ripped out my heart at the exact same time the ending of this book is devastating but in the best way i don't know i don't know how i moved on from this book honestly and how i just kept going in february next we have the book of asriel by Amber V. Nicole. This one was very good. The final physical book that I read in February was King of Wrath by Anna Huang. I rated this three stars. Last two books from February, I read Shut Out by Avery, Avery Keelan, and I rated it four stars, another hockey romance. And then after that, I read Twisted Lies by Anna Huang, and I rated it three stars, and that is the fourth book in the Twisted series. So that is our 14 books from February, I read six fantasy, five romance, two YA, and one dark romance. All right, moving on to our March books. Let me grab them. All right, you can see my reading slump kind of kicking in. I read nine books in March. I say reading slump, like I didn't read nine books. Started out the month with The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I rated this three stars. I would definitely rate this higher on a reread. Next, I read Guild by Raven Kennedy. I rated that two stars. I'm sticking with that rating. Honestly, I might even rate it one star now. And then I read Glint by Raven Kennedy, three stars. And then I read Gleam by Raven Kennedy, also rated three stars. The only thing I will say about this series, I that's me DNFing the series right there. After that, I read Twisted Love by Anna Huang, and I rated it three stars. It was, it was a first book to a series, that's for sure. I think this one had too many twists in it. But, you know, it's a twisted series, so. Next, I read The Wicked King by Holly Black. I also rated this four stars. That feels like a very fitting rating for this book. I love this series, but I think as a series, it's a five star series. The books individually are not. After The Wicked King, I finished off the trilogy with The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. Love this one. Super good. Super good series. Oh, I rated that four stars as well. Next, I read the first book in the Crown of Nyaxia series, The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. I rated this three stars. My final book of the month, and honestly one of the best books that I've read all year, for me, for me, was Bride by Ali Hazelwood. This was my only five star of the month of March. I described it earlier as the perfect published Wattpad book. Like it's vampires and werewolves and there's like some mystery going on but also arranged marriage and like the characters who are supposed to be fitting into these like super stereotypical species don't and so that it's like really cute and also I just loved all of the TikTok drama around this book. Um, I loved all of the people that never read fan fiction who were picking this up for the first time and were like what is this? But this literally was like the perfect book for me. As someone who grew up reading Wattpad books, especially in the prime of like werewolf and vampire books, like I was reading Wattpad when Twilight movies were coming out, when all of that was going on and there was the whole like vampires and werewolves were ruling the world. This is the perfect book for from that era. And that wraps up our, uh, our March reads. Like I said, nine books. I read five fantasy three YA and one romance. Cool. Uh, April, I only read four books in April and I didn't even finish a book until April 15th. So I was in a really bad reading slump. And that book, uh, that book was a reread. <laughs> so the first book of April was my fourth wing reread. I was working on videos, on cosplay videos. I was just listening to the audiobook while I was working, honestly. I was also, I think this was the month I got like, 15 hours into Fire and Blood, and I haven't finished it yet. So I was using all of my Spotify hours on Fire and Blood. And when those ran out, I was like, geez, I just need another audiobook. And I was like, well, I already have Fourth Wing. I think I was like out of audible credits too, or I didn't want to use them because my sister's in the middle of Throne of Glass. And so she needs all of the audiobook credits she can get for that. But I reread Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Once again, rated it five stars. Again, I love this book. After that, we have a new book. I read Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mirror, I hope. I love this book. I rated this four stars. I'm very excited for the sequel to come out. Also, I accidentally somehow got a first edition print. After that, 
another reread to get me through the month. This is when I picked up Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Again, another five star read. I also uh, re annotated this book while I was reading it for the second time. The first time I read it, I pretty much was just underlining, I tabbed a few places. And then the second time that I read it, I listened to the audiobook as well as I went back in and I highlighted and I did more. And then I also did little cute like doodles in it. So like, there's a scene where they kind of, they talk about this game called Kissing Chess. So I drew little chess pieces. And then I doodled some of the arches in it on like the pages where they describe the arches. So like this is the arch for the party. Love this book. Like I said, I'm halfway through The Ballad of Never After again. So recommend it. Stayed five stars. While I was reading that, I was also attempting to finish Carval by Stephanie Garber, which is the series in the same world about different characters set before Once Upon a Broken Heart. Technically, you're supposed to read Carval before you read Once Upon a Broken Heart. There are massive spoilers for the second book in the Carval trilogy, Legendary, if you read Once Upon a Broken Heart before. I like Once Upon a Broken Heart better. I don't know what it is about Carval. It's just not like for me. I rated this three stars. The only reason I got through it was because I had the audiobook for free. All right, that was, um, that was April for me. I read four books and they were all fantasy. All right, you know? Okay, let's just like, I'm just gonna keep this train rolling because we have to, even though we're only halfway through May, I have to get through all of the 50 books that I read. We're on the home stretch, I swear. In May so far, I have read four books. I have also started three other books. So it's not that I'm DNFing them, it's just that I'm, I'm just in the middle of them. But the end of the month is gonna be very good reading for me. I can already tell. First book of the month, King of Pride by Anna Huang. I am all caught up on these. I wanted to read this so that I could read King of Sloth, which came out on April 29th and I already have. I rated this three stars. It's the second book in the Kings of Sin series. Next, we have another reread. I once again read Powerless by Lauren Roberts. This was to get ready to remember everything because I read this, I think I read this in like straight through the first time I read it. So I didn't fully remember what was going on and the novella Powerful came out as well on April 29th and I'm like halfway through it. But I listened to the audiobook of this again. The audiobook is fantastic. It is dual narrated. Wish it was duet narrated. That would just be like chef's kiss. But very good. Once again, five stars on the reread. Love it. The next book that I read was also another reread, but I read this book at the very end of last year. So I've only read it once this year now, which is Shatter Me, the first book in the Shatter Me series. I have only read the first three books in this series. I have not read all six or any of the novellas. I rated this four, Shatter Me is four stars to me. And you know why it's only because of Adam that it's four stars. Let's be completely honest. And my 50th book of the year, including the rereads, I'm counting all of my rereads as books because I still read them. But my 50th book of the year was a five star read. And I knew it was gonna be, it was one of those books where you know it's gonna be a five star read when you're like a hundred pages in. But my 50th book, Heartless Hunter by Kristen Cicerelli. I hope that's how you say her name. I loved this book. I got this as a book of the month book, but I got it like the month after it was one of the options on book of the month. And I only got it because I liked the cover and also I'd seen like one TikTok of someone being like, this book was so good, you should read it. So I picked it up because it was on Kindle Unlimited as well. And I was like just scrolling through Kindle Unlimited and I saw it and I was like, oh, I could read like the physical book when I want to and the Kindle Unlimited book on, like on my phone when I'm like, when I don't wanna like hold a book or have a light on or whatever. This book was another five star read for me. There was a couple of the tropes that I was like, this is so stereotypical. Like it's like the main character's guy, best friend who is in love with her older brother that she has a thing with. And I was like, at first I was like, I don't know. Like I'm not the biggest like childhood best friend to lover person that that's just a personal thing from my history but i'm not usually like super down for that but something about the way that this book was done where they were both kind of seeing each other for the wrong reasons and then they both started falling for each other and then everything went to shit at the end like right when they both decided that they loved the other person 
everything went bad but it was like in a way that the third act breakup wasn't it wasn't stereotypical like it was but it wasn't but it was like in a good cliche way highly recommend this book i loved it but yeah that is my year of books wrap up cannot believe i have read 50 books this year also uh, like if we're counting fan fiction i've read more way more than 50 books I I just like devour books, especially books on my phone and like fan fiction in a way that should not be possible, honestly. Thank you if you stuck around through everything to see, you know, my final book of the year so far and final five star of the year. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys are enjoying the book content as much as I am. I'm really enjoying reading and like watching other people's like book tours and like their book vlogs and whatever i'm just like i'm eating it up right now so i hope you are also enjoying and if you are please like and subscribe you can also tell me what books you liked out of all of these in the comments that's always appreciated i love chatting with everyone i was gonna say i love chatting everyone up but that's no also my tbr for this year has gotten kind of insanely long so i'm really hoping to uh chew through that and also to read some of the books that I have started and not finished. I literally came from the bookstore before I made this. Me, you know, thinking that I'm just not gonna buy more books before I read all of the ones that I have. <laughs> okay, I have to put all these back now.